到我们的州长以后，您可不可以介绍一下这次的活动里面您的感受？也是很期待跟他见面。呃，从二零一四年我们纽约华人总参会给他做了第一次的这个活动。之后啊，我就觉得这个州长很平易近人。从他上任四十五天的这个政绩上面来看，他他为纽约州，呃，做了很多事情，很多贡献，呃，就特别是能把那个，能把那个这个这个疫情的这个事情从七十八点几个不是降到二点几个不是，真的这个工作很不容易。到明年的六月份的初选，会会会赢了，会赢得初选，然后到十一月份会赢得大选。所以继续当我们的组长，再当下面八年是最好的。呃，大家好，我是美东河南同乡会的会长赵斌，跟多个社团共同参与主办了，给纽约州长呃筹办的一个活动款。当时是前副州长，并且呢很积极主动，呃，采取了很多措施来控制疫情，这个社会治安呢都会有新的好转。呃，我们在这里呃预祝呃他。在他的领导下，我们的生活会变得呃更好。过去的十年八年当中呢，开始对我们华人社区非常支持，呃，特别是他他运用了我们华人这个这个这精英嘛，作为他的幕僚啊，这样对我们这华人这个社区将来发展会起到一个非常非常积极和主动的作用，能够有帮助的这样的这个这个州政府的领导。这样呢，我们能够为我们的社区发展起到非常积极作用。纽约山东同乡会的现任会长，我叫 Howard 南川。这个纽约州的州长，在还没有上任之前之前，就到我们法拉盛来，啊，做这种咱们对社区的一些了解。今后能够更好的在华人社区的发展，甚至在美国的发展，能够起到很重要的推进作用。这也是。作为一代华啊华人移民，二代华人移民，共同努力的结果。我感觉呢，我们呢，这么多经济界的人都来找我们，对对比我们呢，中国人在美国有一定的影响力了。现在啊，希望美国经济啊，更加会留意我们多一点的中国中国人，要希望我们的下一代的中国人，越来越投票，多参与经济的啊项目。我们华人，我们亚裔。我们一定要呃积极的出来，强制议政。我们要推出，呃，对我们这个华人社区，对我们这个主义，是最有力、最有担当的领导人。我在这里再次呼吁大家，选票就是力量。我们大家一定要出来投票。然后呢，今年的呃普选日呢是十一月二号，呃，我希望大家能够出来。
announce and the host and co-host of this event. So first, Chinese Business Association of New York, George Xu. If I, uh, yeah. Chris Xu. Yeah, raise your hand, yes. Tom Wu. Zhou Xu. Zhou Zhou. Ning Liu, Ning Lu, sorry. Then, Henan Chinese Associates USA. Oh, Frank. Uh, I'm Frank, sorry. Uh, I'm the president of Henan Chinese Associates. Then, David Su. Yes. Xiao Yun Tian. Uh, David Chen. Then, from Beijing Associates of New York. Bao Li Zhang, Peter Hu, Peter Ho. Oh. Then from Shandong, uh, Shandong Associates, Howard Sun, Angela Han, Lawrence Zhao. Uh, then from Sign of America Business Association, Ying Ken Sha. Gary Kong, Li Chen, Chen Lei, Jia Zhou. Then from Coalition of Asian American IPA, Dr. George Liu, Dr. Jonathan Chang, Peggy Shen, and Hilton Zhang. Xiao Yu Huang, Evan Yao. Then I will introduce uh, VIP Jerry Wang yeah. uh, from S N S Aerospace. William Zhang. Yeah, Daniel yeah, Huang. Then Kevin Yam, Sky Food Market. Frank Zhang. ZNT Engineering, Chen Zhaoying, uh, Chairman of Fujian Associates in USA, the Tianji Li, yeah. Chairman, uh, Chairman of the Alliance of Asian American Friends, Raymond Chan, Raymond Chan, an architect, Jiaming Wang, Aerospace Engineering, Brian Pan. Federal Standard Abstract. <laughs> Morris Francis. Morris Martin Capital. Benjamin Clow Coburn. Uh, Monasa Esquire. From Mona. Monasa Associates. Yes. Then we have Sherry Chu. Uh, Chuang Fu Wang. <laughs> and also we have. Uh, the Deputy Chief of Staff, Linda Sun. <laughs> First President of Beijing Association of New York, Zhang Bao Li. Uh, before I come to stage, Linda told me that. Very short speech. Okay, very short. Uh, Kathy, we support you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Now, uh, Howard, Howard Sun from the Shandong Association. Hello, uh, uh, Thank you very much, Mr. President. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our Chairman, Mr. Chairman. Is it very beautiful? Yes. So we're extremely honored to have you here in Flushing, Queens. Uh, you're such an elegant leader, a lady. Because because New York's position is very beautiful. Just like I represent Shandong, Shandong's position and New York's position are about the same. So we're very happy to have you here in Flushing, Queens. Yes. 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 中国和美国永远的友好下去。谢谢。
York, and Shandong is my hometown. I love New York City because we share a common ground and some similarities, and I will always support you. The next aircraft Lincoln shop from South American Business Association. Uh, thank you, Kathy, uh, Governor Coco, for joining us today. I think uh, I speak for everyone in the room here and your constituents that we look forward to working with you and your administration to uh, increase the many opportunities for prosperity for New Yorkers here. So we look forward to working with you. Uh, next, we invite Dr. George Liu, President of Coalition of Asia American IPA. It's truly honor to be here and with uh, uh, Kathy, actually this is the second time we'll be Kathy in the brush and um, help the Chinese community and uh, she has been so much supportive to the Chinese community, our business and also the health care system. Thank you very much. We really want to support her and to be uh, our uh, governor and uh, the president of uh, New York State. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we invite Zhao Dixu, uh, Chairman of Chinese Association, give us a welcome, welcome speech. Thank you. Uh, because everyone is giving me a little extra time, so I actually wrote a couple of remarks and I put it up enough. So, uh, my name is George Su and I'm the President of Chinese Business Association of New York. And I'm truly honored to be here to host this event for governor. And the first, I want to thank all of you for taking your time out, out of your busy schedule to come, out, to come out to support the governor. And the, um, uh, Governor Hoko, it's not, you know, this is not the first time that we are, we're doing this thing for her. Back in 2014, our Chinese Business Association already hosted an event for Governor Hoko. Back then, she's Lieutenant Governor Hoko. And uh, she was very easy to talk to, and then she listened to our voices and the concerns. Uh, she's back into our community again, and at this time as governor. Please give a big round of applause for that. Uh, talking, about, talking about supporting Governor Hongko, as you know, and the, uh, uh, I just want to make sure that the, uh, the, you know, I want to mention something good in the news. And uh, a recent poll from Daily News and the, uh, showed, said that Governor Hoko has a big lead. And then she holds 44% over the two possibly Democratic no nominees, the next one with only 28% uh, and 15%. That's a huge lead. And uh, I know the it's Governor Governor Hoko and the, uh, all of this polls showing <coughs> with the good numbers. And uh, this must be having something to do with Governor's first 45 days in office. And, the, uh, and also her many years of dedication as a lieutenant governor for the state of New York. And the, uh, given very little time, and then just a little bit over 45 days ago, and Governor Hoko faced the critical responsibility of setting up a new administration. And so she could hit the ground running. And the picking one of the best talents from our Asian community, <laughs> Ling Yes. And as deputy chief of staff. And it was a great move. Our, our community applauded her de decision. Congratulations to Linda. Governor Hoko is a person of integrity. She ushers transparency and enforces high ethical standards in administration. She resets the tone in Albany. All of New Yorkers welcome them, and we are seeing it right now. And she also faced a number of other pressing issues. Combating COVID-19 is a big task to Governor. Governor Hoko issued a series of mandates which included vaccination to all healthcare workers and the hospital staff so, 
so the vulnerable patients can be protected. And Governor Hogo also issued a mandate for mask requirements in the schools so the kids, teachers, and the students can be back in the school safely. Yes, yes. I want to give you some numbers to back it up. Before Governor Hogo took the office, our positivity rate in New York, in, that number was taken from August 24, was 78.7% positivity rate. After 45 days Governor Hogo in office, it became 2.23% in the state of New York. That makes New York State one of the lowest on the positivity rate. Great job, Governor. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes. And I just want to cite one more example and then I will let the governor take over. Dealing, dealing with back-to-back -back hurricanes, especially Hurricane Ida, I, I saw in the news and Governor Hoko came out surveying the, uh, the, the, uh, the damages caused by Hurricane Ida and the, uh, along with the other state leaders, you know, you know the city leaders, and, the, uh, and the, she, she talked to the people um, telling them, reassuring them the help, the help is on the way. So I think just another example, Governor Hoko is up for any kind of challenges she's facing. And without further ado, I'm not gonna steal Governor's stuff anymore. <laughs> without further ado, uh, please welcome the Governor of State of New York for the next eight years. Yeah. Good evening, my friends, and I want to thank you for always making me feel so welcome. We've done many, many events together. You're right back in 2014, and I've been at your homes. I've been at many events together. We've marched to the Lunar New Year Day uh, Lunar New Year Parade, and all kinds of weather and flushing. Sometimes it's very cold, and there's snow blowing on us, and some other days it's beautiful. But I've always felt so at home in this community. And first of all, the best ambassador one could ever have would be Linda's son, uh, who, uh, who has been elevated to a very, very important position in my administration because she has proven herself to be an incredible public servant. And I want to thank her for all her dedication, many years of service. Frank Tseng, the uh, Beijing Association of New York, thank you. You've hosted me at your home. It's been wonderful. Uh, George, you, you and your wife, are, uh, uh, Dr. Lee, are so extraordinary in everything you've done. But this building is spectacular. This is a sign that we are back, that we can build even during the pandemic, and to open and create hundreds of new jobs right here in Flushing. So this is so important to me, to make sure that people have good jobs in places like this. Um, Zane Boley, I want to thank everyone at the uh, Beijing Association and Howard Sun, uh, the New York Shande, I'm saying it wrong, I'm sorry, Shandong Association, Lincoln Shaw, the Sino American Business Association, again, uh, Dr. George Liu, the Coalition of Asian American IPA. Thank you so much. Uh, this is a wonderful, powerful, influential host committee, and I am so humbled and honored that you have gathered for me this evening. And this is an important gathering of people who truly care about this community. And there are so many issues. Uh, you heard from George about how we're dealing with this hurricane. The hurricane hit this community really, really hard. And I walked the district many times, we'll walk the neighborhoods with, with Grace Mom, who's one of my great friends from Congress. We talked about how people, some people, don't have citizenship and they weren't able to get the, the help they needed from the federal government, so we were able to help them as well. We also saw that when people were trying to get us federal assistance, they had language barriers. We had to make sure that all the forms were in languages they could understand, particularly in Chinese and Mandarin. Same thing happened when we were dealing with the pandemic. I went out to many of our facilities and people were not showing up in the Asian community to get their vaccinations. Turns out many people did not have the language information they needed and where to go. And I want to thank the individuals in this room who helped us get the testing out and the vaccines out. And as a, re as a result of that, as you mentioned, our infection rate is one of the lowest in the country. And that means that we'll be able to get through this pandemic sooner, get people back to work, everybody in school, and to really bring back our economy. And I also am very concerned about many of the small businesses in the Asian Chinese communities. Some of them didn't make it. They couldn't keep the doors open during the pandemic when so much was shut down. Many of our restaurants were hit hard. 
So I put money behind this to help them recover. $800 million of support for them as well. And one thing it's hard to talk about, but I want to address this, is the preponderance, the high number of Asian hate crimes, where people are feeling very insecure even to go out and get a vaccine. And I understand the stress because I went out to the community and I talked to people and I gathered people and I said, what can we do to help? So we just allocated $25 million to go to various communities so they can protect themselves and have the security measures they need in place. Thank you, thank you. My number one priority is to make people feel safe in the state. Uh, there's been a lot going on in our city, a lot of stress on people, and we've seen too much in our subways and on the streets. And I want everybody to feel the love that we should feel as New Yorkers. This is a place many of you, most of you came to by choice. You could have gone anywhere in the world and you came here. This is the home that you have built. And for that, we are a richer nation. We, are, we thrive on the diversity and the hard work ethic that the Chinese bring here. And we, we know that this goes way back in part of our early history in this nation, helping build the infrastructure, building our cities and building the small businesses that give us such an amazing identity. So I'm honored to have your support I look forward to, as George said, at least eight years. Uh, we hope to continue to have a thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, all those poll numbers are very encouraging. Uh, it's early in the process, and the, the big election for me will be at the end of June, so that's uh, next spring. But until then, you can count on me to keep fighting as your governor. And I'm so grateful for your support, your friendship, and also your investment in me. The money we are able to raise for the campaign will allow me to go out and have television advertising and to tell people my priorities and how I'm going to fight for every one of you. And I want to tell you, it is the highest privilege of my life to serve as your governor. And I won't let you down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. So we are very happy to see the beautiful, energetic, and caregiving governor. Thank you very much. And now in this critical time, I think, and we all hope, under the leadership of the governor, the New Yorkers will have a secure, okay, we will have a most, we have safer, better, and a happier life in the future. So thank you very much. And I know we have a lot of friends want to come to speak, but unfortunately we don't have time. So now we have free chat, uh, about 20 minutes. So thank George and Dr. Lee for providing this banquet hall for us. And also thank Gary Khan for bringing us the wine. Thank you very much for everybody.